Welcome back to the Tournament Center. I'm Randy Bueller here with Brian David Marshall. We are in round six right now. Round five just ended. Round six has gotten cranked up. So the field's really starting to separate itself at this point. You got a ton of bubble matches. People try to get to 4 2, and they get to keep playing this weekend. And then you look at the top of the standings right now. The top eight, if the tournament was ending right now, would be ridiculous. If you cut it right here, you'd have Adam Chambers, Johan Sadegpour, Kenji Samora, yep. Takoya Asawa, who won Prague, yep. John Sani, Richard Rich Hone, Owen, and then uh, hanging out just tied just out of the top eight right now, Quentin Martin and Willie Edel. So, and uh, and uh, what about Mike Cron, don't forget Mike Cron. Yeah, three Americans undefeated right now, that's a bit of a surprise. <laughs> a, you know, some awesome names there. You got some big names playing bubble matches too. I mean, we'll bring, bring you a rundown of the carnage in a little bit, but sitting on the bubble, Pierre Canali is on the bubble, Tiago Chan is on the bubble, Paulo Vitor Damo de Rosa, we have your boy, Andre Coimbra. Andre Coimbra is on the bubble. I have a lot of my picks are on the bubble right yep, now. Yep, yep. Herbert Holtz. Olivier Ruel playing in a, in a bubble match. Uh, Frank Karsten playing in a bubble yeah. match. Shuhei Nakamura playing in a bubble match. <laughs> round, round six is going to be going to be uh, interesting. Has the potential to be a bloodbath. Yeah, it's interesting at the top and it's interesting. So I guess it's at the bottom, the middle, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Uh, we thought we'd take a break though, right now, and you know while those matches are going on, we'll bring you coverage of those certainly when we have the news for you. But we want to throw it to uh, to Rich Hagan. He's been helping us out with the video coverage, doing some pieces himself, and you know he was out on the ski trip. It's just it's just really the Pro Tour Swiss Alps. Pro Tour ski vacation, so wanted to bring you some more coverage of that, and uh, let's throw it over to Rich. How cool is this? When Wizards took the Pro Tour to Honolulu last year, everyone started wondering, how can they top this? Well, this year they have by about 4,000 feet, because we're in the Swiss Alps for Pro Tour ski. The 2007 season is underway. We're on the road to Worlds, and we're also on the road to the Alps. For some, it was their very first sighting of snow, since Cold Snap came out. From Japan, Shuhei Nakamura was keeping things cool. But for the rookies amongst us, the mountain was shaping up to be a tougher opponent than a world champion. So many things to think about. Binders to check, goggles, gloves, pads, poles to grasp, and a desperate need to restore some balance. Lock and load, it's off to the slopes, poles at the ready, and we're off. Now, that is called the snowplow. I didn't know that this time yesterday. Two generations of podcast presenters. Who's going over first? Ha, huh, it's not me. And you just know that Randy Bueller's not getting up from there anytime soon. Yes, it's my first time seeing snow, actually. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's different from anything I've ever seen, anything I've ever done. It's like learning to walk again. I can barely walk with those. I don't ski. I'm probably going to fall a lot of times, but... It's a nice experience. That's what I'm here for. I'm pretty excited. I don't know if I can make it up this little, this little hill here, then I'll get to skiing. But <laughs> okay. I've done a little bit of dry, uh, dry slope skiing before in the past, um, but not for quite a few years. I took, I took a kind of a fresher lesson on Saturday. I think this is great. This is uh, definitely a first for me, uh, being able to uh, go out and experience something other than the Pro Tour while I'm at an event. So with our first lesson over, it's into the cable car, up the slippery slope, and probably almost as slowly, down again. Now you know that Apre Ski is all about fun, friendship and a lot of good times. And in the world of Magic the Gathering, good times means draft. And some very special memories to take back down the mountain from Pro Tour Ski. That's amazing. I, I don't think I would be doing anything like this if it wasn't for the Pro Tour. Yeah, it's amazing. Look at it. It's gorgeous. It's pretty awesome that they're doing this for the players. It's uh, you know, something a lot of my friends are probably jealous of right now, playing a game to you know, go to Hawaii or go to the Swiss Alps. <laughs> well, that was great. And now here we have the man himself, Rich Hagan, hanging out with us yep. at the Tournament Center. Hi, guys. Now, are you okay, Randy? Two legs still standing? <laughs> Not feeling a little sore after that tumble? I'm fine. It was fun. Yeah. Took one for the team, fell right in front of the camera. That's yep. the way I was supposed to do it, And right? that was the script. That's what we agreed beforehand. <laughs> Good man. Well done. Didn't, you never knew, right? So, what, 
why don't you tell the tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, how you come to be here watching me fall down on skis. And okay, like. well, I guess my blurb is as a lifelong entertainer. I kind of walk in talking entertainment system, and you know, I'm I'm a performer, an actor. Um, I write musicals. That's one of my little wow. spare time things. And I guess when you combine great entertainment with great stories, and all entertainers are storytellers, <laughs> you get Magic the Gathering, right? And here we wow. are. We could tell 30 stories just from round six, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's my deal, and I'm here to tell some great stories what, what, what have you seen today what's the best thing most interesting thing you've seen in I the think, five rounds that are in the book so far I'm really impressed after two rounds there was a list of 12 guys any of which could have been top 8 and they were all at 0-2 hmm. so in round 3 you look at them 10 of the 12 win their round 3 hmm. and you're thinking okay but that's fair enough you're playing other guys on 0-2 and, and you're the best in the world right but now you're looking at them and they've all gone one, two, 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 three, two, and they're all sitting there oh, wow. playing for day two. Olivier, Tiago went 0 oh, two, yep. you know, and he's my pick for player of the year this year. Right. So, you know, um, you've got to hand it to the guys who, when adversity strikes, they go, you know what, I am good at this game and I'm going to show you I'm good at this game. Anything in particular you're looking forward to going into tomorrow? Well, obviously, I'm British, can you tell? Um, and so I'd like someone English to do well. Um, of course, we've got Craig Jones on the blog. Yeah, the, uh, the Pro Player blog didn't, didn't go that well this tournament. No, but lots of constructed this year, and Craig's the man <laughs> for that, so we'll see him back. Limited. He did make it into the second draft pod, so, I mean, he's got that. He didn't actually 03, but. Go Craig. Picked up, you know, round four, beat a hasty retreat from the tournament. Yeah. They, right. they can't all be lightning helices, I suppose. No, 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 no. And not in this format, sadly. Do you have a particular break you're, you're pulling for? Not really. No, I mean, Stu Wright, he's a guy who's um, he's a constructed specialist, and lots of pros have used his decks. Right. And he's kind of approached this one as if it's a constructed pro tour. He huh. just has to construct his deck every round. Okay. And he's going, well, I'm, I'm playing Slivers. Slivers uh, is the way forward. Just the um, he's just going, I'm going to go Slivers, then I'm going to go Slivers. His draft deck for this, for this second pod was... Absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. It was blue-white slivers, basically uh, multiple watcher slivers, multiple sinew slivers, multiple synchronous slivers. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I think he had a telekinetic, telekinetic sliver. Yeah, and he's right. got guys in the and, board as well. And he had the necrotic sliver, too. So he was touching <laughs> yes. black for that. Vindicate sliver, put your guys in the bin, good game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. His, deck, his deck looked absolutely absurd. And I talked to a couple of people who played him, they're like, I, I just played Stuart Wright. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they just Bang. kind of like get Tweety Birds spinning around their head. Nice. Well, the thing is, Stu Wright's had it for a while. It's just not been quite consistent. He'd be Osip at, um, with, in Honolulu, uh -huh. playing Zoo with four cards on the play. You know? I mean, he, he can beat guys, but he just needs to put it all together. Sure. Maybe, maybe this is his time. What are you going to be spending your time doing you know, the rest of the weekend? Well, apart from waving at mum at home, um, basically I'm doing most of the audio stuff that you used to do. So You're taking over um, the podcast. I'm doing the podcast. Um, we did the European Grand Prix circuit last year. Yep. Um, and now we're here not just doing that, but doing all the pro tours with you guys, the Invitational, and basically just bringing together the whole year of magic, that great story. Mm -hmm. It starts today. And we're going to be talking you know, long after today is forgotten, the points that the guy who comes 193rd, Maybe that comes down to the semi-finals of Worlds in right. New York, in your hometown, Brian. That's going to be key. Yeah. All right. Well, have fun. Thanks for talking to us. And you guys, take care, boys. Thanks. We'll be back with more tournament coverage later today.